We are awakening together. This is our weekly gathering we hold online. For more information, visit our website, awakening-together.org. We'd love to see you there. I'm so glad to be here with you on this beautiful rainy day in the Pacific Northwest. So, our statement of purpose. Awakening together, we are an assembly of equals, joined in common purpose, awakening to the one true self. Within an appearance of many faiths, many cultures, and many symbols, we seek to discern one truth and to rest in its embrace. So today, um, I'm going to talk about our core value number three. If anybody is new to awakening together, I know there's at least one person here that's new. Um, there's five core values, and um, when there's a gathering um, and a homily, we have to speak to one of those core values. So I'm choosing number three, which is we accept one true self, which is one presence or being, non-dual, without beginning or end, and absolutely changeless. We live this value by practicing letting go of the belief in the individual self as who we are. Thank you, sign up. So my prayer for today, for this moment, is that I'm here to teach myself and what I am to learn and bring truth and clarity come through and to bless. Thank you. So, um, Sharon is going to read for me. She is going to read um, NTI, Holy Spirit's Interpretation, um, one John chapters three and four, and these, these ends, I can't say it, chapter three. Okay, can you hear me? Just shake your head, yes. <laughs> the awareness of God is an awareness that is pure and looks on only that which is wholly true. This awareness is within you. It is the core of what you are. It is an operation as God now. However, you are not aware of your God awareness because you have allowed that which is false to be held in your mind as true. This is what is meant by purify yourself. You must make the decision to release all that is not true from the mind because that which is not true is false. And so it is an obstacle to the total awareness of truth. Sin is a false idea. Sin is false because the idea it supports is also false. And that is the idea that you are separate from one another and from God. There is a greater falsity than this, for there was never, there's never been a moment in which separation existed. Separation as a fact is impossible because it goes against the very nature of what you are. It goes against the nature of what life is. And so separation cannot be. Dear child, do not be led astray by your own confusion. There is no sin in the world. There is no separation. The world that you see comes from the thoughts that you think. The thoughts that you think seem to be more than the thoughts that you perceive as in your mind alone. This is because you are not your mind alone. There is no one mind alone, separate from other minds that are also alone. This is an illusion. The belief in separation is the false thought that can never be true. False thoughts are all thoughts that are based on the idea of separateness. False thoughts include, but are not limited to, thoughts of guilt, attack, fear, hatred, and regret. 
all of these thoughts imply that there is a, a mind that is separate from yours with separate will and desire. All of these thoughts imply conflict now, in the future or in the past. All of these thoughts are mistaken because none of these thoughts are based on truth. All that is true is oneness and the activity of oneness, which is love. Love is the only fact because oneness is all that is true. You need not worry that you do not love your brother in you, you need not worry that you do not love your brother in truth because love is all that you are capable of. You only need to ask, am I aware of my love? If you are not, you are still believing that which is false. The thinking mind cannot know love because the thinking mind thinks apart from love. This is a statement of concept, not truth. Because in truth, nothing is apart from love. But this is a concept that is helpful because it points toward truth and the thinking from the thinking mind does not. The thinking mind is confusion because it is based on the belief in separation. It defines love as something one does to or for another. But whenever a thought of one and another is involved, the thought and knowledge of love is lost. For love is based on oneness and anything that is not based on oneness is confusion that has forgotten the unbreakable law of love. We obey God's commands and do what pleases him because it is the nature of our existence. This is fact. This is love. This is what we are and what we do. And there has never been a moment when this wasn't true. The thinking mind cannot follow this thought because the thinking mind believes in separation. And so it cannot see love, which is not separation. One must surrender the thinking mind to know love. Because one must surrender the thinking mind to know that which isn't separation. That which isn't separation is oneness and truth. And that which is oneness and truth is that which is also love. Love is all that there is. This is a fact you may put your faith in. When any thought does not feel like love, you may put it aside as false. Thoughts are not love. Are thoughts such as these, lack, limits, competition, victimhood, personalhood, strife, and fighting sick and fighting, sickness, death, rage, sorrow, helplessness, hopelessness, control, and loss. These are the thoughts that imply separateness, and separateness is illusion. So these thoughts and thoughts that seem like them are not the thoughts of love. They are false thoughts of illusion. God is love, and love is everything. The thoughts of everything are these acceptance, joy, gratitude, peace, and welcome. There is no resistance in love because love is everything and everything cannot be resisted by that which it is. God cannot be denied fully because God is the truth that is the core of you. To deny God is to deny yourself and this cannot be denied fully. Because to deny it fully be to deny existence. Existence cannot be denied because it is. Look at this and know your salvation is at hand. Existence cannot be denied because it is. This is the truth that sets you free. In accepting this thought, which, is, which cannot be denied in any present moment, you accept that God is. And you are one with God. In this thought, you accept yourself and you do it with joy of recognition. Now that you have accepted yourself, follow yourself home to the full and complete, complete awareness that is God. In this way, love is made complete, not within reality, for in reality, love is always complete. But this way, love is made complete within your awareness. And then love is complete within your awareness. There is no awareness that is not love. 
Fear disappears within the awareness of love because within the awareness of love, there is also the knowledge that there can never be anything to fear. We love because we are love and love is all that we are capable of. To love God is to know God and to know God is to love all things because all things come from God, which is love. To not love is to believe in falsehood. This is merely misperception since all that is all that is and all that isn't never was. Through Christ, all are bound together and there is no separateness. This is the law of love. This is what you are. You are inseparable from it. When you think you are thinking alone, you are not. Your thoughts, which are heard by your brothers, are answered through them. This is the law of love. This is why all things are love. Only love exists. Every experience that is given you is unequivocally the gift of love, given an answer to the request for love. You perceive yourself as a person, but you are not what you perceive yourself to be. You believe your thoughts are private and have no effect beyond the brain you see as yours. All of this is illusion and a misunderstanding of what you are. You are a being made in God's image through the process of creation that is God. In this way, you are the same as he. The process that you are is what you are. It is your truth. It is how you live and exist. What you do through your mind is made and created, not alone, but in conjunction through oneness with your brothers. Your relationship with your brothers is per perfectly bound free and loving in its operation, that all you can truly give them is gratitude. For without your brothers, you would not be and you would not experience. Your very existence is extended and experienced through them. I pray that you being that I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have the power together through knowing Christ is your truth. Christ is the truth of all you see and sense and experience because all that you see and sense and experience is given you through Christ at the request of your own desire. This is the law of love. What you ask for, you receive through unfailing love of your oneness. This is the truth of all existence. This is the law of love. Give, therefore, every, th th through your every thought, only that which, which you would receive. For as you give to your brothers, they hear a request. In love, they give back to you exactly as you have asked. Thank you. So where am I going with all this? Um, I got an inspiration to talk about love. And uh, lots going on in this house. I got three young men with girlfriends that, you know, lots of things are packages going out and things happening and um, and, you know, love, you know, Valentine's, it's all about love, right? And what is, what is love really? Um, is it, you know, your loved one showing, giving you, taking you somewhere or giving you flowers on Valentine's day? I suppose that, um, for some people that that might be, you know, it feels good. Um, but really love is a concept, right? Um, it's not truth, at least in the way that, um, we celebrate Valentine's day or relationships with, uh, so I looked at what love is in the dictionary and it said a profound, tender, passionate affection for another person a feeling of warm personal attachment or deep affection. Um, let's see, a person towards a person where love is felt, a beloved person or sweetheart. Um, strong prediction, enthusiasm, or liking for anything. And then was, I thought this was kind of funny. 
in tennis, it's zero or nothing. So um, I think tennis got it right. Um, anyway, so love is a concept. It's something conceived in the mind. It's just a thought, you know, and it comes and goes. And one day you're in love and the next day you're not. Um, and so it's not truth. And for me, it, it seems like love is kind of a contract. It's a giving to get. If you give what, you know, if you give me what I want, and I'll give you what you want. And, and it's kind of like an agreement. And then, then if someone doesn't hold up their end of the bargain, then there's a fight or some, you know, somebody's angry about something. Um, so it's just, you know, make me feel special and important. And, um, you know, or if I love you, you know, you got to love me back. So, but what is love really? I mean, um, love is acceptance. Love is allowance. Um, and that's all it is. Um, in John 3, or 1 John chapter 3, um, the thinking mind cannot know love because the thinking mind thinks apart from love. That is a statement. This is a statement, a concept, not truth. Because the truth, nothing is apart from love. The thinking mind likes to think in concepts, separates and sorts out good and bad and solves problems and says, you know, I love this, but I don't like this. And, and that's not love. That's the thinking mind can't even conceive of love because it's just so open. It defines love as something that love does to or for one another. But whatever a thought of one another is involved, the thought and knowledge of love is lost. So it thinks, I love that person, but I don't love that person. Um, so there's oneness is gone. So love is based on oneness. It's the I am. It's existence. It's our life existence. Our isness, consciousness. Love knows nothing else. It is the acceptance allowance of everything as requested. Nothing is resisted. It is all that it is. And all that it isn't never was so what love isn't never was it's false to not love is to misperceive and all thoughts that are not of love are false the video we saw is all not love there was attack and hate and judgment all kinds of really you know things Lack, you know, it's just all about the fighting. And none of that's the truth. Because it's based on separation. It's based that we are all, all separate and one of doing unto another. But how can one do unto another if we're all one? We're all just one existence and one life. And the mind, our mind, is all joined. So how... I mean, unless we're fighting within our own mind, I guess that's what's happening, really. So to know love is to let go of the thinking mind and not have an opinion, having no judgment on anything and to do nothing. And that sounds kind of crazy. Um, the whole reason for this that came up for me is um, we got in December, I guess, we got a new TV. And my husband and my son decided to put it in the family room, which is connected to the kitchen, which is kind of when you're a mom of three boys and, you know, you're in the kitchen a lot, cooking constantly. Otherwise, they're going to talk about. So I'm always in the kitchen and here's this big TV and it's got surround sound and the booming and the, you know, just the bass and you know, everybody's happy and you have to watch their TV. And here I am used to having like a quiet, peaceful little kitchen to kind of 
do what I need to do. And, and now I'm being intruded upon. I, my husband loves to watch, you know, anything that there's fighting or, or he's sci-fi fantasy. I don't know. Just all kinds of noise and craziness going on. People get killing and screaming and, and it's like, Oh, where'd the peace go? Where'd it go? You know, it's just like this TV is always on and, then I realized, oh, okay. Yeah. I love my husband. You know? And and he loves his TV. So why would I be against that? So I was like, okay, can I allow this? Can I allow this craziness that's going on and people screaming and yelling and and whatever, you know, when I'm in the kitchen trying to do things and whatever. Um, it's like, yeah, I can. And now it's just, you know, I see it, I allow it, and I don't really have to think about it. I just love the fact that he's there and watching this TV that he loves so much and enjoying it. Um, so I was just allowing. But the hardest part of it was not the shows that he watches, but it was the news. Every night, dinner time, the news is on, and it's just scary. You know, I mean, the stuff that's on the news is like, oh my goodness, this is happening in the world right now. And every night, it's like the world's ending. And I have to, <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, this is happening. Can I, can I love this? Can I allow this to happen? And it's like, yeah, I can. And now I kind of just laugh at it because it's so, the newscasters are so um, crazy about it. And they just like over-dramatize it. It's like, wow, you know, more drama than the TV shows. Um, but it's not because I'm dismissing it's like, you know, it's loving all. You got to love the hate and you got to love the pain and you got to love it all. Because that's love and love and awareness allows everything. It just, it doesn't reject anything. And in Ephesians, the law of love is that what you ask for, you receive so is the unfailing love of your oneness. Love is giving to the spirit that which spirit requests. So if I reject, if I resist, is giving attention to something other than love, which isn't real. So, you know, do I want to continue the illusion? Or do I want to realize that it's all about consciousness it's our consciousness and I don't want to add back into that because it's not the truth the truth is I see people doing things to each other hurting each other because they don't know you know it's like forgive them father they know not what they do and they wouldn't do it if they knew if that choice was there in in the mind at that time they wouldn't I know, you know, it just wouldn't happen. But the choice wasn't there at the time when that was happening. They're just believing their thoughts. They're believing what's out there in our collective consciousness. And I don't want to be a part of that. I want to know that, you know, this is all love. We're giving and receiving in love. Give through every thought only that which you receive. For as you ask your brothers, they hear a request. In love, they give back to you exactly as heavy as you have requested. We love because we are love, and love is all we're capable of. So um that was my motivation. 
I get lots of examples of that in my life. I'm going to read one more thing that I found. It was in General Healing, Healing 3, I think, day 274. I'm just guessing I didn't write it down. Is the commentary on love. This is from Regina's guidance. Love is acceptance. In order to accept, one sees through falsehood to truth. For you cannot say you accept a thing as it is if you also insist that it is something that it isn't. To love God and self and all is to accept God and self and all as it is. This is also a choice to let go of insistence that it is what it isn't. And this true acceptance as it really is is love. So love is it's just our being. It's who we are. It's our awareness. I have experienced a few times in my life. Um, and one time it was during after reach, a retreat and I was out walking the dogs and I saw some roses and I just started crying because it just it was so beautiful. I just couldn't. And then I saw another flower and then another flower. And I was in just absolute tears of joy. And it was just this open, openness to everything. And there was another time when my husband and I, about 11 years or so ago, we were fighting. We were going to get a divorce. And he was going to file the papers. And I was driving, listening to, I think I was listening to um, Marshall Rosenberg, who's the NBC nonviolent communication. I was coming back from a retreat. And I realized that I did not see my husband. I was projecting my parents' relationship um, to my husband and I's relationship and trying to somehow work it out that way. I didn't even know who he was. All I knew is I was projecting my dad and I was trying to work all this stuff out. And I was like, oh my God. And when that, when I saw that, I realized I did not know him. And everything at that point just dropped away in emptiness and absolute love for who, who he is. And I came home and I said, I don't want a divorce. I love you. And um, yeah, so it, it'll be 28 years in July. And um, yeah, so, um, and then there's another time, or actually it happens daily with my, one of my sons. He pushes me to show, he shows me that I'm not, loving unconditionally. And when I'm not loving unconditionally, he lets me know. We decided he was not wanting to do the traditional, you know, go out, get a job, do this. He's just had a lot of fear. And I was encouraging that fear by telling him he wasn't doing it right. And I was always on him, well, you got to do this, you got to do that. And it just made things worse. And finally, I just looked within and was like, <laughs> He just needs unconditional love. I don't care what he does. He can do whatever he wants. It's his life, and I'm just going to love him for who he is. And it was a couple years. And, you know, he still lets me know if I occasionally say something that's not, not unconditional. But he's taught me unconditional love. But I didn't care. It didn't matter. And I can, I mean, I, I didn't know how that was going to work. And people questioned me constantly. What are you doing? What are you doing? What's he going to do? It's like, you know, just love him. Just love him. That's it. That's all, that's all we have to do is just love him. And right now he's um, getting his pilot's license. He wants to be a commercial pilot. So he's just showing me that, you know, he just needed to, for me to, to love him and be that love and allowance. 
So I thought I'd share those two, those examples from my own life. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm done. So, okay, now we what do you do? <laughs> we played the song and we need to remind people that we need to donate because we work off of donations. It's a beautiful place for all of us to join. So I guess we're on the sharing part. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> yes, Michelle. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Oh, I am so, my heart is beating so fast right now. Um, both of your examples touched directly on things that are appearing in my experience. And they're just such simple answers, you know, love my husband, Dave, because he loves his TV and it's in our living room which is also our kitchen. It's one big, and it's something that has been a seeming problem for quite a few 24 hours. And I, and I went from ex stopping expressing it out loud to him, right? But there was still that inner grumbling. And it's just so simple. Love him because he loves those shows. And he, you just gave such a great example of being the, the peace and stillness within whatever chaos or commotion that's going on. And I appreciate that. And I also wanted to share with you that <clears throat> I have a 22 going on 23 year old son and he's just not doing a traditional path. Like does anybody actually, what is a traditional path, right? Who knows? But anyway, um, that's been something that's been uh, percolating and, and you confirmed what I know to be true is to just to the best of my ability with the help of what you guys are teaching me is just to love him right where he's at and, and not to place more pressure by checking in. Oh, did you follow up on that or? You know, what do you think about doing these days? You know, I'm just, my job is to let him be and let him be a part of my experience, which is wonderful to have him in and to have a relationship with him because he's such a good kid and sensitive and loving. And so thank you for uh, confirming those things for me today. And I'm just very grateful to be here with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my son's 25, and um, he's been my teacher since the day he was born. All three of my kids, but him in particular. So um, I'm glad. I uh, I don't know how all this came together, but I knew I needed to talk about it. So yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone. It's nice to be here today. Thank you, Michelle, for sharing your uh, insights and also the meaning of love and also uh, what's going on in your life. Um, I do have a husband that loves sports, so everything is about sports. And um, I'm learning to love sports. I'm learning to um, sit with him while he's listening to the sports news, and now I'm asking questions. <laughs> which before I was just like, I want to get out of here. So um, it's wonderful when you just rest, accept, and trust, and you just see that it's all happening for, for my awakening, uh, to see where there's judgment, where there's limitations, uh, duality. That's what it's all about. And the mind always has something to say about it. And even like, you know, it will always have something to say about it. even Regina mentions that. So it's just to lean into the um, loving everything as it is, like you mentioned. And, uh, and it doesn't mean like I'll sit with him for a while. And then I'll say, okay, I'm going to go up and I'll see you later. Like, you know, it's no big deal. 
So um, before I would even feel guilty because I was leaving the room. So now it's even uh, loving me and loving him the way we are. So anyways, um, I, really, I, mean, I really love the last song you played. I'm going to look it up for sure. It's a nice song to dance to in the morning and to just be, um, to open your heart and to see that we're all different, but we're all made of the same stuff, which is love. So thank you very much, Michelle. I love you. Thank you. That was beautiful. My husband is a basketball. He, yeah, he, it's basketball if it's not something else. So, yeah. And I've learned to to love it. Anybody else? Raise your hand. Kelly. Kelly. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you, Michelle. That was um, beautiful. It just um, really opened up my heart. Um, and I appreciate you and your honest sharing of um, how it plays out for you. And also, you know, Diane, what you hit on about, um, <clears throat> you know, being able to, as we go through those experiences and check in for our own guidance about what's appropriate now, what do I need to do now? And the reminder that it is always about um, our own healing, our own purification processes, and um, and that's what leads to what we truly want, which is the experience of love by loving, by loving all. Um, and those of you who know me and have heard me share, I'm the I'm the husband in all these scenarios, right? I'm the TV head. <laughs> I'm the sports fan. My husband is the um, sports widow for sure. And so we appreciate your guys' unconditional love in this area. So anyway, nice to see you all. And uh, again, thank you, Michelle. Um, beautiful homily, very helpful and uh, appreciate you. And thanks, Sharon, for your reading. Thank you, Kelly. You are, you are my, I don't know, I mean, we have loved, lots of lovely ministers, but for some reason, I feel a really strong connection to you and as a, a mentor. So thank you for being a beautiful example. Joe. Thank you, Michelle. Good morning, everybody. Can, uh, can you hear me? Um, first off, I want to say that the musical selections were just outstanding that song and the everyday people and uh, uh, just, yeah. And um, the readings, I love the readings and your, your sharing of your personal um, experiences with this and what's coming to me right now, my dog is getting real excited because every time she, anyway, we'll just ignore her for a minute. But uh, um, what I'm hearing and kind of a common thread that's coming to me when I, when people have shared and what you shared is, is what it's like being married to someone or having a significant other who is not on a spiritual path. And, um, and, and, and I'm just thinking, well, that's one more thing to be grateful to Regina for, because how many times has she come in here and shared about, you know, my partner who is not on a spiritual path. And then she shares about how she's interacted with that and how important it has been to, keep turning that back in to what's going on with me. What is, you know, because, um, and I think this is probably pretty common. I know it happened with me is that when, especially when I became very sincere about the spiritual path, it's like, oh, there's this person in this house that's not sincere and I need to, need to rectify this somehow, either convert her or get her out or, you know, and then a job, I got a job thing. I got to get rid of this job and get a different you know, all of that stuff, keep changing, you know, the situation and the circumstances and all of that out there. And um, and what I'm hearing, and this is just such a great reminder, just, you know, what's going on in here and um, and how am I to be with this? How am I to be with this? And I loved all the sharing. I, um, I wouldn't consider myself a sports widow. Um, however, my spouse is Teresa Loves. Um, she loves TV. She watches TV every day. And, uh, and 
believe me, for a long time, it was very annoying. I became very annoyed by this. And now we found a, um, kind of a balance. Um, you know, um, last night we watched the, uh, what, the movie watchers movie for this month. We watched that together. Um, you know, we watch a movie occasionally together. She left recently to go to something with her sister and she's got on her red Kansas City Chiefs shirt, you know, and uh, all of that stuff. And of course, next week we'll be with her family and watching the Super Bowl and that'll be a thing, you know, but, uh, um, and we've learned to kind of coexist. And, and most of the time it's like, you know, okay, I'm going to go upstairs and to my room and do the, I tell her I've got homework to do, you know, and, and uh, do that thing. And, uh, and we're both, you know, um, and that's not a lie because I'm doing the 500 days again. So I do have homework every day. <laughs> so I've got homework to do. Um, and we, we both have found a way to uh, kind of be with this for now. And, uh, and uh, so I loved hearing everybody's stories about that. And that's kind of the thread that I saw go through it. And uh, thank you for, um, for reading, Sharon. And uh, thank you, Michelle, for sharing yourself. I appreciate being here. I just want to say, too, I just thought of something. Um, so uh, Sharon and I talk and we have similar husbands, but there's a shirt I want to get for my husband. It says, that's what I do. I fix things and I know things. And that's been a total like, OK, you you know all the answers and I don't need to know anything. Yay. <laughs> So, and that's, you know, we used to fight about like, you know, I know how to do this and whatever. And, and I'm like, no, nope, you know how to do it. Good. Thank you. I don't have to think about it. And so, and he is, you know, he's mechanical type. He does all that good stuff. And even when he's telling me how I should do something, like, okay. You know, and it's been, it's been so much easier than fighting. And it really, none of it really matters. So. You've been watching our online gathering. It happens weekly on Sundays at 1015 a.m. Eastern Time. To join us live in the sanctuary, visit our website, awakening-together.org. You'll want to click on online sanctuary in the main menu, and then in the drop-down menu, look for how to enter the sanctuary. Right there at the top of the page is a clickable link. We'd love to see you in the sanctuary and join with you in fellowship. Thank you again for watching. Also, please know that if you'd like to stay connected via the Awakening Together channel here on YouTube, you can subscribe and hit the bell for more notifications. We hope to see you in the sanctuary.